We define a rational number as any number that can be expressed as a fraction. Each value a and b must be an integer, and b, the denominator, cannot be equal to zero. Simply put, a rational number can be thought of as a ratio of two integers. Consider the example 2 over 5. This is a rational number because the first integer a is 2, and the second integer b is 5. What about a whole number like 8? We know that we can rewrite 8 as 8 over 1. So 8 is again a rational number where a is equal to 8 and b is equal to 1, the ratio of two integers. And now we'll take a look at the square root of 16. We know that 16 is a perfect square and that the square root of 16 is equivalent to 4, which can be written as 4 over 1. So again, it can be expressed as a ratio where a is 4 and b is 1. So the word ratio should tip us off to rational, a number that can be expressed as a fraction of two integers. Next, we can define an irrational number. A real number x that cannot be expressed as a ratio of two integers is considered irrational. Irrational numbers cannot be expressed as terminating or repeating decimals. Consider a value that continues forever without repeating. This is implied by the dot 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 notation at the end of a value. This value may look familiar. It is the first seven digits in pi, which we know is an irrational number. Now we can look at the square root of 21. We know that 21 is not a perfect square, so this will not work out to some clean value. Evaluated, it is a number that continues forever and never repeats, so the square root of any non-perfect square is an irrational number. So let's remember that when a number is irrational, it never repeats and it never terminates. It goes on forever. Now we can go ahead and visually explore how to determine if any real number is rational or irrational. We can start with the question, can the number be expressed as a ratio of two integers? If the answer to that question is yes, then we can conclude that the number is rational. However, if the answer to that question is no, then we can conclude that the number is irrational. We can also note that any real number must be either rational or irrational. A number cannot be both or neither. Now we can start to explore operations between rational and irrational numbers. We can start by seeing if whether or not the sum of two rational numbers is rational or irrational. So here we have two rational numbers, a over b plus c over d, where a, b, c, and d are all real numbers. Notice that we do not have a common denominator. So we're going to go ahead and multiply the fraction on the left by d, the denominator of the fraction on the right, and multiply the fraction on the right by b, the denominator of the fraction on the left. Doing this gives us the common denominator of the product of d and b. So now we can continue to add these fractions together. Notice that combining these together still leaves us with a ratio. Therefore, we can conclude that the sum of two rational numbers is still a rational number. Now I know that that probably seemed very abstract, so let's go ahead and look at an example with some actual numbers to better understand why the sum of two rational numbers is still a rational number. So let's go ahead and take the ratio 3 over 4 and add it to the ratio 1 over 2. Both are rational numbers since they can be expressed as a ratio. Since we need a common denominator, we can rewrite the fraction 1 over 2 
as 2 over 4, both meaning 1 half, and now we have a common denominator of 4. That common denominator allows us to add the numerators together, 3 plus 2 is 5, all over that common denominator of 4. Of course, 5 over 4 is a ratio of two integers, which means that it is a rational number. Next, we are interested in whether or not the product of two rational numbers is either rational or irrational. We start with the rational number a over b, and we're multiplying it by another rational number c over d, again where a, b, c, and d are all integers. When multiplying two fractions together, we simply multiply the numerators together, a times c is just ac. Then we multiply the denominators together, b times d is just bd. And this is all one fraction now. Now even though we don't know what these products are, we can see that it's still represented as a ratio and therefore is still a rational number. Therefore, we can conclude that the product of two rational numbers is still a rational number. Let's now apply this to an example with some actual numbers. Let's multiply the fraction 9 over 4 by the fraction 8 over 3. Both, again, are rational numbers. Same process as before, numerator times numerator, 9 times 8 on top is 72. In the denominator, 4 times 3 is equal to 12. 72 divided by 12 we know is equal to 6, which of course is a rational number, which again helps us to understand why the product of two rational numbers is still a rational number. Now we're going to explore the sum of a rational number and an irrational number. So we start with a rational number a over b, and we're adding to it an irrational number x. Assuming that the rational number is not 0, we are going to make another assumption that this sum is going to equal a rational number. Be very mindful here that we are making an assumption that it's going to be a rational number. We want to test and see if this is true or not. If it is true, then the sum of the rational number and the irrational number would have to equal another rational number, we can call it c over d, where c and d are both integers. Now to get the x by itself, we're going to have to subtract a over b from both sides of the equation. By performing inverse operations in this way, the a over b is eliminated from the left side of the equation, leaving x by itself. Notice that we can rewrite the right side of the equation as the sum of c over d and negative a over b. We concluded earlier that the sum of any two rational numbers must also be a rational number, so we know that this sum is going to be rational. We also know that x represents an irrational number. This leads us to a situation where an irrational number is equal to a rational number. Wait, what? We know that this cannot be true. Thus, this is a contradiction. A number cannot be both rational and irrational. Therefore, our assumption was wrong, and the sum of a non-zero rational number and an irrational number is irrational. Let's go ahead and verify this with an example. We'll start with the rational number 3 and we'll add to it an irrational number 2.7432, continuing on and on forever without repeating. If we stack up this rational and irrational number and find the sum, we see that we are left with an irrational number since it does not terminate and does not repeat. Therefore, the sum of a rational and irrational number results in an irrational number. And finally, we want to explore whether or not the product of a rational and irrational number is rational or irrational. So we can start with the rational number a over b, and we're going to multiply it by an irrational number, which we'll represent with x. Again, we can assume that the rational number is not 0. And we are also going to assume that this product is going to equal a rational number.
we now need to test and see if our assumption is correct or not. Assuming that it is rational, this product would have to equal another rational number, which we're going to call c over d. Now to remove the a over b from the left side of the equation, we are going to just divide it out. This will eliminate the a over b term on the left side of the equation. On the right side of the equal sign, we are going to apply keep change flip for dividing fractions. So we can rewrite this as c over d times the reciprocal b over a. And we discovered earlier that the product of two rational numbers is going to be a rational number. And we know that x represented an irrational number. And again here we have a situation where an irrational number is equal to a rational number, which is a contradiction. <laughs> Since our assumption that the product would be a rational number was wrong, we can conclude that the product of a non-zero rational number and an irrational number is equal to an irrational number. Now, for example, if we had a rational number of 2, and we want to multiply it by an irrational number, the square root of 31, the square root of 31 evaluates to a non-repeating decimal, which when we multiply by 2, evaluates to another non-repeating decimal, 11.13552, going on and on and on forever. We can see this is clearly an irrational number. This example should help us to understand why the product of a rational and irrational number is always equal to an irrational number. And that's all there is to it. We are done with this lesson. Wait, what? Thanks a lot guys for checking out that lesson. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and head on over to mashupmath.com for more content and practice activities. You can also follow Mashup Math on Instagram and Twitter for daily updates, answer keys, and more exclusive content. So please hit us up and let us know what you think. <laughs>